Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Impossible. I am your co-host, Austin, uh, still out here in lovely Utah. And today is uh, post-race day. So yesterday, Saturday morning, had a half marathon in Cedar City, Utah. And um, throughout this video, or throughout this recording, I very much intend on um, sharing some photos and videos with you uh, from from race day, and so that'll be uh, that'll be kind of uh, sprinkled throughout the, the video itself. But I wanted to give you, you know, a recap of the race itself, how the day went, how the race went, and ultimately uh, how I did, which seemed to seemed to fare pretty well. So. And where to start? So about a month ago, I was told about uh, the Cedar City Half Marathon and, and 5K, but I did the half um, by uh, by some uh, an engineer here uh, in Utah. And as soon as he had told me that uh, it started up in a canyon, went downhill through the red uh, through a canyon of uh, Red Rocks. I was pretty much hooked at that point, and then as soon as I went to Google and actually looked up the route, yeah, it was uh, it was a no-brainer, I have to say. <laughs> so, and, and the timing actually worked out fairly well. So I was already out here for work, and I was able to uh, get registered with you know with ease. Uh, registration was um, fairly quick, and um, and yeah, and so. Being about a month out, I was already, I was already in preparation for the full marathon in Columbus, of course. But um, did have a bit of a catch along the way. Um, for those of you who had, had uh, listened to our uh, one of our recent episodes, um, I, I did um, my PET scan did come back not so good and we're having a biopsy to confirm it but it does look like that I have relapsed and so that did kind of cancel the full marathon for October for me but you know maybe we can still do a half at that point or or if, you know things go a bit worse you know at least the one mile so but you know this before all that begins I you know I had this half marathon and it was still going to work out well so uh, we continued on uh, in training for this, and and so I was, you know, getting really, really excited, really, really excited. Um, haven't done a half marathon since uh, late April, early May, so um, I was a bit, uh, a bit nervous, but honest, but mostly, mostly excited. I have to say. Nervous just for my body, but excited for my mind and and knowing that this was going to have plenty of beautiful beautiful vistas so and that that <laughs> was found to be very very true so coming up to the week prior so this past week um, I had some you know some prep work to do in terms of getting the the proper fuel getting the uh, proper mindset coming into it. Uh, nutrition was was certainly big during this week, so I um, to try to cut out any unnecessary weight uh, for the week prior. I found myself in a, a bit a bit of a calorie deficit, pl still plenty of protein, a little bit of carbs, but I just wanted to try and kind of uh, again shut off some unnecessary water weight and also a little bit of fat. And I was able to lose six pounds within the week, so I was I was really happy with that. Coming, coming into it, obviously the majority of that's water, but still six pounds is quite a lot when you're trying to carry, you know, that weight over 13.1 miles over that many steps because uh, it's quite quite some time. <laughs> so at least for me, and and so that was you know deemed a success uh, in my opinion, and and then also just collecting the proper nutrition for the day prior and the day of, and and now the day after. So. Lots of protein, but then also a lot of carbs, a lot of clean carbs, uh, some, a couple of pastries, but I reserve the right to enjoy those. <laughs> but, you know, setting up for, you know, day prior, looking at, um, I had some chicken pad thai for lunch, so a lot of noodles, a lot of noodles. 
um, then I had uh, about four to five hundred grams of cooked rice with um, with some uh, with some steak, and and that was f phenomenal. Um, and then a couple of, like I said, a couple of pastries, some stinger waffles, just to try to uh, stinger waffles. I went with uh, with my protein shakes, just to add some fast acting carbs along with that protein to kind of you know help the help the protein get to the muscle, um, and also you know also the point of all these carbs is definitely try to get you know uh, some water back into the muscles, kind of get them prepped, and yeah, and then. About six o'clock, I headed down south because I was still up here in Salt Lake City on Friday. So then Friday evening, I drove down. It's about a three-hour drive. So got in a little bit late, about 10, 10, 15. I got into the hotel down there, which, you know, is fine. And I, I assumed that sleep was not going to be, um, not a whole lot of sleep was going to be achieved that evening. And I was unfortunately found to be also correct in that. But, you know, got there, got everything prepped for Saturday morning so that I could just put my gear on, grab, you know, grab the bags, grab the uh, stingers, um, and, and go from there. And so got everything prepped, sleep. Again, I got to bed about 11.30, and I woke up, uh, woke up at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., when I was supposed to wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> on the tot. So that was a bit strange, I must say. Um, my body was experiencing weird dreams, and so I kept thinking that I had to get up, you know, at, you know, at, you know, 0, 100, 0, 200, 300, 0, 300, you know, because I had set my alarm for 0, 400, and I just, for some odd reason, at, at the top of each hour, I was just waking up thinking that I had, that I was late, and I was uh, unable to, or that I had forgotten to, to hook up with some friends to get out to the race, even though, I was only meeting up with one person, <laughs> and that person wasn't involved with the dreams. It was just, it was strange, but you know. But also, it obviously, was just nerves. Again, you know, the last half that I'd done was quite some time ago. So, um, coming into this, uh, coming into this was. Mindset-wise, was was a bit difficult because of the news that I had received that that I may have relapsed, and and it all kind of caught up to me there Saturday morning when I was my my commute to the kind of the, the parking garage that we that all the uh, runners parked in was only like a five minute drive for me, but that five minutes seemed like forever. One, it was kind of in the middle of the night, <laughs> you know, at 0, 0430, but I I was just in a completely different headspace. One that was certainly preparatory for what was about to come, but also one that was very some somewhat distracted. Very distracted. Um, as to how important this race was as there's a possibility that I'm, you know, I won't be able to do any sizable feat of, you know, strength um, or endurance for, for quite a few months coming up. So, you know, it, it, it weighed heavily on my mind. And again, I reserve the right to, to have that, but I also, I was also able to kind of keep myself on track. I pulled up uh, Heilung, Absolutely love listening to them, especially especially for these you know bigger moments of of endurance or strength. That I, I I find a lot of strength for the mental side of it through listening to them. I actually listened to their most recent uh, live performance at the Red Rocks Amphitheater, <laughs> just one state over, and um, that that performance was breathtaking and, and impeccable. Almost transcendental because, especially the live uh, the the, vi the uh, video recording of it that they have on YouTube, it was um, the visual experience that they and the show that they put on was just that was the transcendental part. I mean, the music alone is, of course, 
you know, lucid in its own terms or in its own making. But I, I absolutely love the visual aspect that they put on for this show, especially. It, it, it really, really has a big impact on me. And as it does for <laughs> millions of others, just how incredible they are. But I watched that, and that really got me into the groove as I was <laughs> sitting in the parking garage alone um, for because I, I got there quite quite earlier than what I needed to. Again, just the nerves, but you know I, I embraced it. So and then the time came along. I met up with the uh, engineer that told me about it. You know he was he was actually getting ready to run. Uh, his his goal was. His goal was sub two, but he was a bit nervous coming in as well, just with the lack of training. But uh, he actually crushed it. He hit one, one, what was it, one fifty five oh four something like that, or or one fifty four fifty four something something. I, I think it was just it was sub one fifty five, which was it, it shocked him, but he was you know super happy with that and a really good race. And so, but I met up with him and. We get on the buses because uh, we were shuttled up to the top. Uh, that were <laughs> the top. We were shuttled to the starting line, which was up into the canyons, uh, or canyon, and it was about ten miles up into the city or up out from the city. Oh my gosh, and at an elevation of eighty two hundred feet, at. 0600 0630 and then our starting time was 0700 so they they had a bunch of the uh they had a bunch of uh fire barrels which had uh the cedar city you know half marathon inscribing but also kind of like the uh the image that they use for it really really cool with the fires going in them you know in the dark with the the, the trees in the background um and this uh, little pole off area is where the starting line was and you know the trees back there are really really cool um for the ambiance, for the for the setting of the starting line, and then they also had a bunch of like the those restaurant heating lamps, you know the the higher up ones, a little umbrella on top, and the you know uh, propane fueled ones. They had a bunch of those, and everybody was crowded around them because it was sub forty degrees, probably sub forty five. It was it was a little chilly, but it wasn't too bad with the humidity super low. It wasn't you know really crisp, um, and so we're just getting ready. Uh, everybody's using the <laughs> using the restrooms at this point as well. Uh, quite quite some lines to the outhouses. Um, I think there were like how many how many runners were there? I I I believe there was just under five hundred runners in total for the half marathon. Um, I, don't, I don't have my time card with me, unfortunately. I should have had that for this, but uh, here's a photo of it. <laughs> and so. Um, yeah, and uh, we, we, you know, we're, we're all getting lined up for the start, you know, uh, for the start, and uh, nerves, nerves were gone by this point. By this point, with the sun, you know, slowly start, uh, we didn't see the sun for the first probably 70, 60 minutes, hour to hour 10, after the actual start, but um, just because of, you know, the, the mountains due east, but... Uh, you obviously the the sky was you know being lit up slowly by you know slowly but surely over that time and it was just revealing because we driving up it was still you know zero six hundred and so it was just dark and you couldn't see anything but then you could start to see kind of the wonder that that this canyon had had to offer and that was the start of something beautiful really was and so yeah, and so the guy, the uh, I think it was a siren went off, not a gun. Uh, siren goes off, so we take off, and uh, um, the guy I met up with, he 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 deserved to be much ahead of the pack, or much within the kind of the main portion of the pack, and then I was <laughs> far far back. I I actually started off, um, I started off running beside the two. Uh, they they had pacers for each uh, for every ten minutes of interval. Uh, for finish time, and so I, I got by the two hour forty minute uh, uh, pacers, and I thought if I can just keep if I, can, if I can keep these two behind me, you know that's that's going to be a great PR, and you know I, that's what I expected was to get you know that was my goal at least was sub two forty. So we start, uh, we're taking off, and so for for those ten mile ten point three miles. 
that was coming down from the canyon, our slopes for 98% of that time were two to five percent grade um, or negative percent you know grade a uh, couple of times actually negative six degree grade and so it was uh, and this was something that um, uh, the engineer had had kind of warned me about he's like hey you know you're you're gonna find yourself running pretty quick and having a really fast pace and then you're not you know and then once you get further down the hill you, the slope is gonna come up and up and up into it even uh, once you get down to the town and then you have another three miles and you'll notice that your pace was way too fast and you're going to be drained. So just be careful of that. And the first mile, I, I set a 954 pace, which was way too fast. And so I, I slowed it down a little bit. I went to a 1015 pace and that seemed slow. So I, going into mile two and then mile three, um, I really, really didn't want to slow down I, I i tried to keep the 10 15 i i slid into like a 10 minute pace uh and then to a 9 50 pace and sometimes uh there were moments at least that i was extremely <laughs> distracted by the by the beauty and the all of the canyon as we were going down it just did because you, you, the the canyon itself was obviously winding. Uh, following, uh, we were following a creek that eventually turned into a fairly large creek or wide creek at least, and and so it's winding down. And so you just have these different different cuts out of different rocks, um, and they also got a little bit taller as we went down as well. Because the road would go down, but the canyon would kind of stay up uh, in terms of elevation. And so just they they got taller and they were wider setting um, as we went down, and the. Uh, I forget as we're going uh, so yeah yeah definitely enamored the entire time but as we were going down this was uh, a really cool effect and I'll, 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 I'll cut in this video as well but there was <laughs> there were two two bagpipers playing uh, some tune and they were up on a, a rock, kind of posted up to the uh, to the north on the the right hand side of the road, and just sitting there playing. Like you, you heard them at first, and you're like, "Oh, somebody's playing music," you know, "somebody's playing bagpipes over a speaker." No, it were two bagpipers playing. It just it was such a cool experience, and um, and so I, I took a video of that, and I, I'll show you two over this over this moment here, and that was yeah, that was kind of. <laughs> for me personally, I took that as a bit of motivation, you know, um, being mostly Scottish in my in, in my lineage, and so it, you know, and also I'm a bit a bit of a of an emotional person as I'm running, and so I just hearing that I oh it fired me up. It it really did, it really did. That that kept me going. That definitely didn't. Uh, <laughs> Helped me in slowing down at all, I must say, because I because I also had I, I continued high loom, uh, playing in uh, my shocks, so it, it just I just kept trucking along and get to mile four, mile five, still you know still a bit you know uh, still dusk kind of going on, and the canyon was kind of opening up a little bit, some higher peaks, and it was just again just I was in awe. That entire time, the entire time, that was that was an experience, and it was. So they had an aid st aid station at about four four point one, four point two miles, and I, as I was running by, I was like, "Well, i i just got I had just gotten a power rate at two and a half, so I'm like, I, I'm going to skip this." And I was like, "Hey," in the moment, I just forgot the intervals of the stations. I was like, hey, do you guys know when the next aid station is? Thinking that it should have been after mile six, but I just wanted to make sure. And they're like, oh, we have no idea. And unfortunately, they had said that after I was well after them. <laughs> so uh, that was cool, but all was well. And and so I just kept going. And at the aid station for six point, I think it was six, six point five, six point six. So it, like the, the halfway point. Gotten up there. And that was the first time that I'd actually stopped to walk. That blew me away. Absolutely blew me away. 
I mean, it was it was like a mile and a half, two miles in my previous half that I had to start walking. Like I had to. My heart rate was through the roof. Not that not that I wanted to to start walking, but I had to. And this race here, I was able to keep my heart rate, you know, sub one fifty five, and so I just kept going. And then I stopped to get uh, to get Powerade. I took a couple of uh, electrolyte tablets and got a uh, a stinger in with a little bit of caffeine, and and then kept trucking. And then it was the next aid station. I stopped to get another Powerade and electrolyte tablets again, and another uh, stinger. And then stopped once more in between eight and ten, and then stopped to grab another power rate at the ten point, well, at ten point one, ten point two, something like that, where where the race actually broke off uh, onto a trail that ran in, you know through the town. So we were on we were on the state highway for that ten point something miles, and then we shoot off. So grabbed a power rate, had another stinger, had some more electrolyte tablets. And then just just took off, and this was on like a little like bike path that went through some, uh, oh, oh, you know, wonderful park. Uh, and then get into town, start winding around, get into like a actual like city park on the inside, inside of town, um, where city parks normally are, Austin. And start winding around, passing some uh, Southern Utah University students that are they're they're basically making sure that we go on the right path. Uh, I don't know if some of them were too happy about being awake at, you know, uh, at, you know, for some of them, they, for some of the racers, they definitely had to be there at, you know, 7.45, 8 a.m., you know, for, for miles 10 and a half, 11 and on. And so some of them were a bit, you know, not overly happy about being awake, but, you know, they, they all had the, there were certainly varying emotions in terms of, encouragement coming from them but they all said you know great job and stuff and it's always best for you to say thank you because you know they don't have to be there so that was that was really cool and uh get around and then it was about about 11 it was about 11 miles in i i I started walking so that i could make sure that i uh well, one, I, st- I started walking so I could take uh, the last electrolyte tablets, the last stinger, um, last, uh, I got a power rate as well, and then uh, mile 12 marker came up, and I said, okay, we're going to hit that, and we're not going to stop. And so I hit it, took off a little too fast, <laughs> about an eight and a half minute pace, and then I slowed down to nine and a half, and got to about 10, 15 paces, what I was at as I rounded the last couple of turns. And you could hear the the finish line, but you couldn't see it until the final stretch. And so uh, that was a bit encouraging, but discouraging at the same time. It was, it was strange emotions, strange things going on. But uh, yeah, got to about yeah, 10, 15, uh, 10 and a half minute pace for the last stretch there and, and just kept going. And I was sucking in air. I was like a like a freight train, just hoofing it, hoofing it. It was rough. <laughs> that was a rough final stretch. And crossed the finish line with two hours, 21 minutes, and four seconds was my official time. So that is a 21-minute PR. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. <sighs> Rang the PR bell. Just gave it one ding. I'm not... I'm, I'm not the person that's going to attract attention, walk up, ring the bell six or seven times, start yelling and screaming. I just... That's not... <laughs> nothing against the individuals that do that. It's you to each their own and whatever, you know, whatever that PR means to you, that's what it means to you and get psyched. Do it. Absolutely. That's just, but that's just not me. I, I walked up, hit, hit a nice little ding, kept walking partially because I was distracted about, because in that last, the last about half mile, I started to lose some of my breathing kind of capacity. Uh, so I have, I have a mild case of asthma. Um, one that I was actually able to avoid for, again, you know, the first, first 95% of the race. And so 
and also because my inhaler, uh, my reaction to the inhaler when I want side effect is increased heart rate. And before the race and definitely during the race, that's the last thing that I need to be introduced to my already <laughs> increased heart rate. And so uh, went to the uh, went to the like the helpers that were we, we all marked our bags at the beginning of the race to put jackets or anything like that that we took up to the starting race. We signed our bags and then you pick them up at you know at the end of the race, of course. And the people that had those organized, I went up and I said, hey, you know. The ambulance is here but there's no emts can you can you grab somebody and so but like don't you know not a rush <laughs> i'm alive i'm fine i just you know i want to want to try to start fighting that now because i was not close to my inhaler unfortunately i, I left it in, uh, in the car at the parking garage so went in emts got me hooked up with like misted albuterol um, which you know what it's not an emergency setting it, it but it definitely helps in the moment and it really did and uh, declined going to the hospital, which, you know, the, the EMTs were super cool, super, super cool. They, they, they realized I was fine, but they, they checked vitals and did what was necessary, at least on their part, uh, for, to check some boxes. But they took care of me, really nice. And I was, I was also thankful that the, it, the ambulance was pretty close to the finish line, but how, like, I didn't get into the back of the ambulance because I'm like this, you know, they, they actually he went to open the door and I was just like no it's I'll be fine we can go around to the side so I was you know sitting there on the side I didn't want to uh, create any attention I, it wasn't necessary nothing bad was going on and uh, that's when the engineer came up and you know we, we started talking and uh, catching up and everything and he told me his time and I told him mine and you know we we're you know, congratulating each other um, both definitely feeling it and uh, we went over uh, he had already obviously sat there for 25 minutes just for me so you know you know kudos for him um, not that I didn't expect him to but it was just really cool to see him and uh, and so he you know we went over to the sustenance tent and they had a couple of like local food vendors as well like there was a like a fruit and yogurt parfait kind of uh, like food truck uh, a couple of places that had like real food um, like meatballs and like oh oh meal things and stuff like that and then he had the tent that was just like ran by the actual race that had just fruit and granola bars and fruit fruit grain bars galore and then all the drinks and so i grabbed a couple of gatorades and uh, yeah and they're 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 announcing you know the winners and stuff as people were still finishing but i mean it was almost you know two hours and 45 minutes into the race by now and so you know still people crossing they were announcing the winners um, and, uh, yeah, posted our photos. Here's a photo of, of myself in front of the 13.1 with the metal, which the metal is a really cool part. Bear with me one second. So here is the metal for the race. Huge. And uh, has a kilt on it, which I have to look more into the race itself. But I didn't expect that to be part of. I mean, uh, obviously the the backpipers was a, were a really cool touch, but I didn't know that there was this much kind of history behind the race itself. This was they they began the race. Oh my, early twenty ten, early twenty tens, and so. You know, the race has some history to it, and and I, I would love to, I need to look more into it, but I think this is a race that I'd like to do many and more times, I must say, just for the, just for those views. I mean, it, they were immaculate. I... I couldn't. I couldn't take my eyes off of, off of some of those, um, off of some of the cliffs. How they were cut, kind of. Uh, you know, a lot of them were rounded. You know, they, these they, they weren't like there weren't a whole lot of sharp edges at first. They were rounded edges because what we ran down was an ancient river. I mean, that used to be, you know, water, <laughs> well above our heads in terms of you know the height that you know that, that used to be a river. 
that cut through there and slowly it's dried up and so seeing all those different formations and how they were cut by the water was just breathtaking i i, I they're not i don't know enough words to describe how beautiful this race was i i need a thesaurus where's my thesaurus give me a thesaurus and so yeah i absolutely enamored flabbergasted gobsmacked I, <laughs> it just it was it was such such a good time and the the pr i just i i did better than my last race that's all that that's all that matters 21 minute pr you could probably you can probably add some minutes to that because of the down you know downhill slope for the for those 10 miles for the majority of the race you know that certainly added some time not to take any not to take any fame away from from my determination and the consistency you know i some of my pace was helped by gravity <laughs> and so that's you know and and that's something you know that everybody holds for this race in particular you know it's, it's being downhill for 75% of the race 80% of the race yeah yeah of course you're going you're going you're going to have some pretty good times and so but ultimately i had a fantastic time just being there i was i'm thankful so so thankful for having that opportunity i'm so thankful for for it working out time wise for me with with what is most likely to come uh, over these next four, five, six, seven months, and and ultimately, I I very much plan on on doing this again, no matter my uh, situation. This time next year, I very much intend on doing this half because that's. It's one not to miss, I must say. Even if that means taking vacation. Even if that means being on the other side of the country. I, I will make it out here for as many of the city Cedar City half marathons as I can. I most certainly will be doing that. That was an absolutely brilliant time. Brilliant time. So, yeah. Yeah, that was... That was my experience with the the race. Um, coming after it, I you know went back to the hotel. They gave me a suite, so I had a bathtub and a shower. Um, well, it was a handicap suite, uh, not a fancy hotel. <laughs> it was a courtyard, <laughs> so I, I they gave me a suite, you know, with an upgrade, and I'm actually kind of thankful that it happened because this type of hotel only has. Uh, walk-in showers and so with that having with it being this I actually had a bathtub and I was just like ice bath let's go and as soon as I got back I set my stuff on the ground wanting to cry <laughs> honestly honestly that because that, that's the one thing about the going downhill that entire time is that you're catching yourself to a degree to to slow yourself down and so my and also I didn't have a good experience with my shoes uh don't don't tell our fearless leader but I was not thrilled with this particular brand and and so uh, my my feet and my ankles were absolutely shredded and then my quads quads and hip flexors especially they were and they still are just done it, it it's been very difficult to move today very difficult I, I went from 29 to 79. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so, you know, that was not the most fun. Not the most fun morning that I've had today, but, you know, all is well. So I got in, got in for the ice bath. Uh, I was, <laughs> the, the ice machine, thankfully, was, thankfully there was one on the floor. And, and only, I was at the end of the building, but it was, it was in the middle of the building, thankfully. So went down the hallway uh, five times with the, the recycling bin buckets that were given here. Just throwing ice as the water's filling up. And uh, got in there. I did four minutes in total, but only three, three and a half for like my entire legs. And then I, obviously, getting in, waiting a second, and then waiting a second before I get out of having like ha halfway up the calf down in the water uh, to kind of help with the feet and the ankles. 
And I'm very thankful that I did that because my thank uh, my thankles, <laughs> my ankles, my feet are definitely. I think they could have felt a lot worse today, and most certainly just with experience in other uh, training runs that are close to being this length. So, so yeah, got the ice bath, laid down, and actually took a nap for about a half hour, and taking in electrolytes and some carbs, but I, I couldn't eat a big meal, and I didn't want to eat a big meal. I really did. I did not want to do that, and I'm thankful that I didn't, because then I had a three-hour drive back up here to Salt Lake, and that I I was ruining that journey, but made it up here, stressed out, <laughs> exhausted, done with the day, and then I had to deal with you know Saturday afternoon traffic. That was the worst. Um, return those shoes, those race day shoes. Uh, they uh, they were no fun. I did not like them. Not at all. And so I got those returned, headed over uh, to my favorite coffee shop, Alpha Coffee, and got myself, uh, got myself a matcha latte. And I think I got a protein. Did I get a protein bowl? Yeah, I got a protein bowl, uh, which is like a quinoa bowl with uh, some chicken in it. The coconut curry sauce, which was finally here, so thankful, so happy to see the coconut curry back, and got it with that, and it was delicious. Oh, because this was, you know, four o'clock, four thirty now, from the race, you know, then ended for me at, at you know, just before nine thirty, finally getting some actual, you know, sustainable food in, and that was, oh, that bowl was fantastic. Uh, still kind of felt weird, but I felt good getting some actual food in and yeah and then got back here took another shower and that one was a nice warm shower and laid down and it was like eight ish o'clock I was out cold so happy to be obviously I wanted to go to sleep but but, but I, you know but there for a couple hours I was just engaging engage, uh, engaging in some monotony by watching some comedy on YouTube. And uh, yeah, passed out. I woke up at, yeah, passed out about 8, 8.30. I woke up at 6.30 today. So, you know, solid, solid 10 hours. I'll take that. And I know I'm gonna sleep well. I'm gonna sleep probably even more tonight. And I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, gotten some really good uh, food in today. So I got another protein bowl. Uh, got a ham and cheese quiche. That's always good. And got a couple of uh, the protein pop tarts and a lot of water. I've had I know it doesn't sound like it, but I've I've had over um, just over three liters of water today. Uh, a liter and a half of that has been electrolyte infused uh, liquids. So you know that's uh, I have a brand here uh, that actually Alpha Coffee carries that has it's 400 milligrams of sodium, 300 milligrams of potassium, and and it's like 60 or 70 milligrams of magnesium, which is not the greatest, but it's, you know, in a half liter bottle. So it's just, it's quick to put down, you know, not heavy electrolytes like a, you know, like, a, like one of the more electrolyte heavy and in, heavy introduced uh, drinks that you can get at like a gas station. I, I was able to get that, get, get a couple of those in today. And then I made a one liter bottle of, uh, uh, what was it called? Relight, I think, uh, infused with that. And that's that's an electrolyte <laughs> um, addition right there. You know, each scoop is 850 milligrams of Redmond's Real Salt, uh, 450, I think, milligrams of potassium, lots of magnesium, and then all your vitamins, you know, minerals, which it, it, it's a heavy, heavy ingredients list, but it's ultimately fantastic, especially for recovery. Um, and so I, I did two scoops into the liter bottles. I mean, that's <laughs> quite a lot of sodium and all that stuff. And, but I, I felt, I can't tell you how much better I felt after that because I had that like the beginning of the morning, of course. And so got that in, got all the food in today and yeah, feeling, feeling good. Um, my body does not feel good <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it's again. I've been I've been walking very gingerly today, and I think I, I 
not trying to put on a show for people out and about, but I did everything in my power to not look like I was hurting. But I don't think I was overly successful in that because I, there were some moments where I got up out of a chair and I, I, <laughs> I would just, you know, naturally react and going like, oh. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> and a couple people. And this was seven a.m. in the coffee shop, and so there, you know there were only a few people in there. And so they, <laughs> this one couple at the table next to me just kind of looked up at me, and and they're we caught eyes, and I was just like, I just ran a half marathon. I'm <laughs> I'm fine. And they were like, Oh, oh, how'd you do? And we started talking, but <laughs> I, I I I didn't want to like oh <laughs> getting up. <laughs> It does not explain myself. Just, <laughs> just walk away. <laughs> oh my! Oh, oh shoot! <sighs> Crack myself up sometimes. So I, yeah, uh, it's been a been a bit of a rough day, but ultimately I'm looking back on it. And as we've discussed before in the adaptation series, there were moments in that race, no matter how taken back I was by the views that I I had to fight through some things I had to I had to hold hold steady hold fast for some very unfavorable wins but having this having this impossible mind coming into every challenge that I face and and this this being one of those I, I knew that at the end I would look back very, very favorably upon this experience. And that's what I've done. That is absolutely what I've been able to do here is, is be extremely thankful for this experience, to be thankful to, to have shared this experience with others, to have seen the views that I have, but ultimately to have felt the pain that I did during the race, after the race, and today, and <laughs> what I will feel in the future. I, it, it, it would be almost impossible for me to, to share with you how thankful I am of this experience. So, to wrap it up here, I, yeah, the race went well. I feel pretty good. Once I'm done recording this, I'm going to go eat some more food. <laughs> that's That's been the biggest thing today is getting a bunch of clean, clean calories and a lot of protein in today. So, uh, and a lot of water. There's water right there. And and so, we can always look into the future, especially when we have very degrading news hit us about what the future will entail could entail most likely will entail and we can let that beat us down but that is extremely unnecessary we control how we react to these situations to these possibilities we are in charge of how we react to those and how we move forward because the unfavorable winds that I may have faced yesterday we look upon them with favor and into the future there is a very very large very intense storm brewing and I control I am in charge I take the power in how I look at the storm, how I plan to attack, and how I look and how I move through that storm. And I have zero intentions of having a setback. I will take these unfavorable wins and 
turn them into pure favor. Not only for myself, but for you. With however, with however, maybe I can say that one more time, uh, with however I can be of help and service. It's crucial, I feel, for me to, for me to stand firm, stand tall, and in these cases, stand proud. Pride's a very dangerous thing if you let it to, to go on without control. But I do stand proud in this, in this battle, in this fight in this war and in this storm that I'm going to be facing. And I will turn those winds favorable. And I will come out on top when everything is settled. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for staying with us on this journey. And, and us here at Impossible Performance strive to build a culture of strength, fostering a spirit of growth and constant pursuit of the impossible. Take care. <laughs> and as always, be impossible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not trying to. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs>